What is an image and how is an image formed? And what characteristics could we use to describe a plain mirror image? These are the questions that we're going to explore today through a short little lab activity. The materials we'll be using are a plain mirror with a binder clip attached so that we can stand the plain mirror upright on a sheet of paper. We have a marking pen and we have two tea light candles that will turn on as our light source. Finally, we have a protractor and a ruler that doubles as a straight edge. The procedure goes something like this. The procedure begins as I take a plain mirror and I rest it upright on a line that I've drawn across the sheet of paper. I then take a tea light candle, turn it on, and place it on the paper at the location of the circle. Now at this point, you can look in the mirror and see an image of this tea light candle. And what's special about this mirror is it's half silvered, meaning that any object placed on the opposite side of the mirror can be seen from this side of the mirror. That's perfect for this next step. I'm going to take a second candle and turn it on and then position it on the opposite side of the mirror at the location where it seems to be exactly aligned with the image of the candle in front of the mirror. Now at this point, if we look in the mirror at the image of the candle, we notice that the second tea light candle is aligned with that image position no matter from what angle we view the image from. Now I remove the mirror from the paper and I trace around that second tea light candle that represents the image location of the candle in front of the mirror. When we're done, our sheet of paper looks like this. Now this lit bulb, which we placed in front of the mirror, puts off millions of light rays, some of which approach the mirror and bounce off of it. So I'm going to do some ray constructing here. I'm going to draw four sets of incident and reflected rays. Two of those incident rays will be to the left side of the mirror, and two will be on the right side of the mirror. I'm going to show for each incident ray how it reflects off the mirror. I need a protractor and a straight edge to do that. I know that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So at the point of contact of each incident ray with the mirror, I'm going to draw a normal line, a perpendicular line, to the mirror at the point of incident. And then I'm going to measure the angle of incidence and in out the opposite side of that normal line at the same angle. The reflected ray gets drawn with an angle of reflection equal to the angle of incidence. I'm going to do that for four different sets of incident and reflected rays. And when done, we're going to ask the question, what do these reflected rays have to do with the location of the image behind that mirror? To understand the answer to that question, I have to realize that to see anything, I have to look along a line at that thing. So to see an image of an object in the mirror, I have to look with my eye along a line at the image location. And when I do, a reflected ray of light comes to my eye along that line. So if I want to see from this position, that image, I have to look along the reflected rays line. For this position, I have to look along that reflected rays line. And from this position, I have to look along that reflected rays line. Now what I'm going to do is take each one of these reflected rays and use a dashed line to trace it backwards behind the mirror. When I do it for this first ray, I notice that it intersects at the image location. When I do it for this second ray of light, that reflected ray of light extended backwards behind the mirror intersects at the image location. And then when I repeat the process for each one of these reflected rays, they all intersect behind the mirror at the image location. So this tells me something about the image location. It's the one location in space where it seems to each of these four observers and every other observer as though the reflected light is coming from. With two eyes, I can triangulate where that image is located behind the mirror because the image is the one location in space where it seems to every observer as though the reflected light is coming from. Now I'm going to do one final thing on my ray diagram. I'm going to measure two distances. The distance from the middle of the object to the mirror and the distance from the middle of the image to the mirror. When I measure these two dif distances, I recognize a truth that the distance from object to mirror equals the distance 
from the image to the mirror. So now we're back to those original three questions. An image is a replica of the object located behind the mirror at the location where it would seem to every observer as though the reflected light is coming from. It's formed because light from our object approaches the mirror and reflects according to the law of reflection. And if you take each of the reflected rays and trace them backwards, it, appear, it intersects at the image location. So two eyes can sight backwards along two different lines to the same location in space and perceive the presence of an image of that object. As for the characteristics of a plane mirror image, first we notice that the dimensions of that image are exactly the same as the dimensions of the object. They have the same size, the same diameter, and the second characteristic is the distance from object to the mirror is equal to the distance from the image to the mirror. These two distances are equal.